Well, it's that time of year for the annual Seattle Home Show. This year marks 75 years and it has everything for your dream home inside and out, plus free seminars with world-class experts. One of the favorites from the History Channel's The Curse of Oak Island is antiques appraiser Dr. Lori. Great to have you back nice with us. Nice to see you, my friend. So we're going to look at a few things today, but just in general, if you're starting out collecting antiques and you want it to go with the stuff you have at home, what yeah. do you look for when you shop? I look for something that can fill a confrontation wall. So that wall when you walk <laughs> into the house, like the big statement piece. Right? I look for that. Might be something like this. I love you know? this little guy. Yeah. I also look for things in categories, so collect in a category. Same types of things, because collections, even if they're just the same material or the same um, particular type of object, they look good just together. They That's don't have to be matchy-matchy, just if they're the same material. That looks great on a shelf, that looks great in a display cabinet, or just on a coffee table. And that's nice because otherwise you just have one-offs and who knows what to do with those right, things. Right, 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 okay. right. So but I want you to buy quality. How do, we, how do you know Yeah, that? so how do you you've got to learn a couple of things. You've got to get a magnifying glass. I don't care how okay. good your eyes are. You're All 25 right. and your eyes are 20, 20. Guess what? You still need a magnifying glass. Very good. So I want you to look for quality. So usually quality comes, uh, fine art is oftentimes a good place to be. Now, mm -hmm. I have a PhD in art history, so I like fine art. But I want you to get a magnifying glass because I want you to be able to identify what's what. So if I asked you what this piece is right. by an artist named Gustav Klimt, very well known, Vienna Secession yes. artist of the early 1900s. Of the kiss. Of the kiss. That's right, exactly. So if you looked at that, how would you describe it? What is that piece? Um, I would say it's a pen and ink. I wouldn't know anything else. Okay, now I want you to look through the magnifying glass okay. and tell me, is it indeed a pen and ink? Look at the top around the can face. I, can I touch it? Can I go yes, around Yes, you can here? touch it. You can do anything you want. You've got your gloves on, which will make sure that the oils in your hands are How not do I transferred. Use this thing? Just go right in there. <laughs> and now, what do you see? Consistent dots? Do you see the actual pen and ink strokes? I don't see anything. Come right here. <laughs> close. <laughs> you really, can do really, really close. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, see? Oh. So you have to learn how to use it first. Yes. <laughs> I see a lot of dots. You see a lot of dots. What Are you the surprised heck is by that? that? What yes. the heck is that? Right. And that's what I'm going to teach you at the seminars. Alrighty. So that is not, in Weird. fact, a pen and ink, but it looks like one. Yeah. That is a mechanical print by Gustav Klimt. It is basically a picture of his picture. In the antique so. world, that's a $10 Oh, oh, well, it's still beautiful. It's still beautiful. I would buy it anyway. So, now, on a wall, that can actually be that kind of resting place. Because with my background in museums, there's areas in your home when you're designed that you need to rest. Not everything can be a whole statement piece. It right. can't all be primary can't, colors. That's right. can't all be in your face, so you have to have resting spots. Okay, that's and what that you would, would use that for. One. And that would be a good buy, because it looks nice and it's only about 10 bucks. And if you pay more for it, then it's not a good buy. Not a good buy. Okay, okay. And that's what it all depends on. So right. items like right. this, how do you know what they're made of? Okay, so on the bottom, you're going to see this, and you're going to get out this again, and you're yeah, going to see, I in fact, to. Yeah, and you're going to basically see, in fact, a lot of information on the bottom. And the information on the bottom will tell you certain things. Like this one says, 1927. Well, it's not from 1927. What it is, in fact, is 1927 is a mold number or a particular style number. That means huh. it's this shape. Okay, so now this particular piece dates to about the 1940s, and it literally is for shaken martinis. Oh. So barware from the 1940s and 50s is making a big comeback that's now. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. And that will look good in your bar or on your dining room um, buffet or whatever, wherever you have you. Can still have use you. it? Is you there can a reason still, why you couldn't? You can still use it. Um, basically, what you want to do, some people like to shine it up. A lot of people like it this look. Mm -hmm. You know, they like the antique -y look. My thing said M. 500 on the bottom. You're saying M500, which basically indicates it's 500 parts per 1,000 silver. So it's about half silver and half copper. Interesting. And if you look at some of these silver pieces, you can actually see the copper underneath. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. see that red copper color because copper is very, very durable. So that's where we are with metals. Try to put metals together even if they're dissimilar. And then we've got this some so pretty. interesting objects that you know, you wouldn't think about. Well, we talked a little bit about barware, you know, the vintage glasses you can get for a couple bucks yeah. at thrift stores even. But then we have things like this, which are those unusual and rare things. This particular piece is a really nice piece. And this particular piece, what do you think this is used for? I have no idea. Okay, it looks like a little pan for weighing, right? Yeah. What are we weighing? Drug paraphernalia. That's are what we? this is. <laughs> cool. This is, this is in fact a snuff scale for snuff. Really? So it's late 19th century Asian and it is for snuff. 
And snuff was, of course, an early poppy. You would snort it. And basically, it would make everything be better, right? Uh, everything okay. better. <laughs> but that's a really interesting piece, That's an right? interesting piece. So here, are, here is a piece that is, of course, a conversation piece. So maybe mm -hmm. this is alone on the coffee table when you're entertaining. Makes and people sense. go, what is it? You know, Makes value sense. on that is about $250. That's something else. Dates to about 1900 Speaking of which, just tell us what happened to you yesterday. Yesterday at this great Seattle home show, we had not one but two French Impressionist works of art come in. Yeah, very high value. For people who didn't know they had them, People right? who did not know they had them what brought is this them in thing? and said, Dr. Lori's going to tell me the truth, and she has the doctorate in this, and I've seen her before, and she's going to tell me what's what. And I evaluated those. They were very high in value. And then we also had a circa 1910, I'm holding it like this because it was a pendant, of 14 carat yellow gold of about 10 carats total carat weight of diamonds and a, a, a central cashmere sapphire, about $20,000 pendant. And they didn't know if it was real. Didn't know it Just was real. Just came in a box of stuff. That From they... their family in New York. How amazing and Amazing. Is that? You know, you have the stuff. You have to look. It's in your house. Yeah. Everybody thinks somebody else has it or, oh, I didn't come from wealth, so they're the people who have it because we were poor. Uh, no. You probably have something valuable, and I can help you identify it. And if you have something that you want to sell, I can teach you how to sell for top dollar as well. And what That's to awesome. look for if you're at that antique market or that flea market. So Interesting objects these. like this. These, these are speak to me because they're colorful and they're different. You wouldn't find anything like this. Anywhere. I, what is this? I and opened it up. And what it's is cool it? that not everybody has the same thing. Right. You know, That's what's cool. Yeah about antiquing and vintage pieces. This particular piece probably dates to about the 19... The, the image is from about the 1900s, but this particular piece is probably made sometime about 1960. And that would have been actually for transporting spices. So that was the... I thought you going to say drugs again. No, no drugs. Sorry. Worried. Sorry. No, no. You think <laughs> I have a problem, but I don't. Chocolate is my problem. Really anyway. into the spices. <laughs> but what you're looking at here would be for spices. But this is a later derivation of an earlier form. This is all hand-done. Done, however, if you look at it very closely, you will see that the whole thing is actually done by hand, not by machine. Whereas this is actually a print printed on top of this. And then, of course, since we're talking about vices here today, Margaret, well, and of course, this is your ice bucket. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, you know, yeah. so we've got all the vices in. Don't forget about antique toys or vintage toys, even toys from the 1970s, 80s, 90s, the Star Wars toys, uh, Kermit the Frog in his heyday in the mid 1970s, <laughs> and pieces like this. Uh, in their original package, and if they're in good condition. If they're in played with condition, not as valuable. But things that you've saved in their packaging. That's right, exactly. Did, we have, who, did staff bring some stuff? Did yeah. you find anything? Actually, our executive producer, Heidi, brought this, and then of this course particular she did. piece. Well, she a, brought the snuff box. She's a, she's a great um, yep. antiquer. And this, of course, is an abacus, also Asian, early 20th century. There's a period in our design history mm -hmm. of Orientalism, and that basically means that we are looking at at France, who is looking at Asia for our design inspiration. Interesting. It's interesting. Oh, interesting. Thank you yeah. very much. Happy to be here. That's how Heidi counts her snuff with the <laughs> That's right. Uh, the uh, Seattle Home, Home Show. Show runs through March 3rd at CenturyLink Field Event Center, and we have tickets to give away today. To enter to win a couple of tickets, just go to New Day's Facebook page, look for the pinned post at the very top, and then comment below the post, and you could win a pair of tickets. After the break, learn to love your leftovers with the secret to making great second meals. Back in a moment.